coming up this hour. You know, looking for people that would join us to do the basics, the water, the fruits and vegetables, 15 minutes of exercise, you know, don't smoke. We're talking the basics. That can begin to change the lifestyle after 50. It changes our community. It's intentional. Thank you for joining us on It's New Day. I'm sure by now you're really into these programs with Cheryl Townsley, and I hope that today you'll stay with us for the hour because I know that she's got so much more to share. Right, she's written a book called Discovering Wholeness. I actually, this is not just a book. I mean, it's, this is a textbook. Yes, it's, it it's is. It's a major uh, on spirit, soul, and body connection, a comprehensive, listen, a comprehensive manual on the physical, emotional, and spiritual roots of health. Now that's Lots a mouthful. Lots of information in there. It, there is, but, but you know, but she's, Cheryl's a motivator and today as, as she shares and as she spends time with us, look to the Holy Spirit to motivate your life. It really, it's not us trying to do it, you know, something without the help of God. God is working yes, in us. Is. And Cheryl is really wanting to bring, bring health and wholeness to you. And it's going to be as, as you open your heart to what God's doing and wants to do in your life. I mean, that's really a big part of it. Well, stay with us, and I hope that you have a great day today. Dr. Cheryl Townsley is our guest. Uh, she's been with us several days, will be with us for today and tomorrow as well. She has written, she's provided some materials for us to consider that we're talking about. The first of all, is she's written a book which is really a, an, awesome, an awesome resource. It's called Discovering Wholeness, The Spirit, Soul, Body Connection. And then a series which in many ways we're detailing a little more, a video series that's available called The Power of Being Healthy. And Cheryl, I just want to welcome you back to the program today. Thank you, Willard. Now, to let, to let people know, you've got a doctorate and you're in naturopathy. That's right, naturopathic doctor. That's the right way to say it, okay. And, uh, and you care about people's health. I mean, that's one thing any of us know. If, if you're a naturopathic doctor, we know these people like that care about other people's health. I think anybody that gets into some form of health as a practitioner, they really care about people because it takes time, it takes effort to get the degrees, to get the credentials. and. And sometimes we get jaded because there's so much responsibility and so much we need to do. But down deep, we all care how it shows up can vary from person to person. <laughs> so, you know, I think it's, uh, that's a very good point. I think some, some people in the healthcare business almost get burned out. I mean, I think they do get burned out by the amount of needs that get expressed or people want to draw out of them. It's, it's a very needy world we live in. Well, part of what happens is you put up a barrier almost not to care too much because if there's problems it hurts too much and so you take on an objective clinical error. I was never never able to do that. I, it, it, I wore it on my sleeves caring for people. So and, people and knew. It, yeah they knew. And, and you know what they've got when you when you're that way I'll know how to get it out of you. I mean I Squeeze. <laughs> yeah, squeeze. Yeah. Yeah. They would squeeze more <laughs> I'd and say so. okay. And, and all my good intentions to keep up any type of boundaries were like gone. gone. Yeah. But I have learned as a result of that, that a community can provide what one person can't. Okay, so, so where you were looked to be, looked at to be the resource for people, you said, hold on, I can't be the resource, but I can help you get there. Exactly. You know, God put that pattern on the earth with the Lord because he didn't have Jesus go do everything. He trained and then he sent them out two by two and then he left and he left the Holy Spirit and he said, come together. And so there's a sense of community and he did it even before then when he created Adam and Eve and a family. We're designed to operate not as lone rangers, but within a family, within a community. And it really surprised me. I, it didn't, it didn't. When I read the research that said uh, in, in the New England Medical Journal, so we're talking, we're talking medical. Well, okay, right. This is good. And it's a, by the way, that's a respected journal. Very respected. When it said that our community impacts our health more than our genetics, more than our no, genes. No, no, Cheryl, are you... They, it says that. It says that. Because I would say my genes 
would probably determine my... No, because if you think of it, in, in fact, if people would just do a little exercise, if okay, they think okay, of their okay. five closest friends, average the income of their five closest friends, how well does it match their income? If they look at the marriage, marriages of their five closest friends, Similar marriage. Similar I marriage. remember a man that came to us, in fact, he was talking to Forrest, and he said, you know, all my friends are talking about getting divorced, and, you know, I'm not so sure my marriage is hot. Those friends were influencing him to see what wasn't working in his marriage. And Forrest and I were coming from a different perspective. Look at what is working. What could you bring to the table? What could you create? When I look at health, you know, people that, is, that are wow. sedentary, yes. people who hang out at fast food places, they hang together. When you hang together with someone, when you spend time with someone, you tend to do the same things. If people that spend time at the clubs, it's people that spend time in the pubs, it's people that, I mean, it's, you're right. It doesn't matter which direction you go, whether you spend time giving to people, um, people who spend time in working out, it, fast food, it, whatever it is, your community influences and brings out of you how you spend your time, which is your life. So our community is very important. And yet most people don't think about that when it comes to health. We think of going to the doctor for our health. We don't realize that our community is either bringing us closer to a healthier lifestyle or pulling us down wow. to a lifestyle that doesn't wow. produce life and health. We just don't think we, about I, it. I don't, because that, that community is influencing me. That, that's, what you're telling me is that what we're saying in that community, what we're communicating to each other, what we're saying, this is our lifestyle. I mean, this is important, because that's, that's what we're saying. This part of our lifestyle is important, isn't it? I mean, that, that, well, that's we what are, it is. Because what does community come from? It comes from the word commune. So it's a group of people who commune, live out a certain way. And so how we invest and where we plug into communities dictates the path that we're on. Now, different research goes on to say that four basics, four, that would be four, four okay. <laughs> add, can add 14 years to our life. Now, let's look at these basics. The first one is not smoking. The next one is eating basic foods. Just basic fruits and vegetables. Yeah, yeah, Five yeah. servings, fruits and vegetables. We all know that. Okay. The next one is to cut back on alcohol, and I'll call that drinking more water. Okay, okay. And moderate exercise. The, it's the, everything in power of being healthy. It's water, it's eating food, it's exercising. What was my fourth one? We have uh, exercise. Not smoking. Because that one's so far out of my yeah, forget yeah, you, that you one. Yeah, you don't do that anymore. So no. those basics, <laughs> yeah. I don't do it anymore. No, you don't anymore. No, okay. <laughs> I never smoke this way. I just smoke so this I, way getting upset. <laughs> <laughs> and the heat came off yeah, my yeah, brain. Right, 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 right. But those four basics can add 14 years. And the community that we participate in is wow. more important than our genes. So what if, instead of by wow. default, spending time with whomever is convenient or worse, isolating. What if we set out to find people we'd like to create health with? You know, what I did with Power of Being Healthy is, please don't, please don't do this as an individual. You can, but it's designed to, to work with five, six, ten people either in your so, church. So that, okay, no, that, that's, it's a DVD series. It's that, a DVD, uh, so... And the whole idea is do this together with someone else. Form a community because I'll give you the teaching in an easy way. There's a CD disc with the manual. So all the questionnaires, all the little activities are there for you to copy for your whole group. The whole group can participate for the price of one. But what's more important out of that, Willard, is that you're forming your community to do this together. Because when you do it together, you encourage each other. Well, gee, I discovered this. Well, you know, when, when I do this, I find it's easier. Because I encourage you to find the why. I encourage you to, to let it be easy. And just take these baby steps. But it's doing it within a community that makes the biggest difference. I, I, I've seen with people that when they, when they do this together as a family, in a church, in a synagogue, in business, in a neighborhood, if they form a community, it sticks. If they do it by themselves, 
they may have some success, but they almost always but, lose but it. But this is, this is true. I mean, it's a part of like AA. I mean, one of the addictions groups, whichever that addiction is. Right. Doing it in community is a huge element of getting victory in the long run. Well, I really think that's why God gave us families. Yeah. He didn't put us out there as individuals because individuals don't reproduce. No. They don't no, multiply. No, that you, you know, that's right. We don't You know, this is like that. really basic, but there's so much truth in it. We don't multiply by ourselves. We multiply within a community. And, and then the other piece in, in, a, in a great book called Younger Next Year, um, the doctor who wrote that mentioned that 70% of health issues over the age of 50, that would be me, over the that age of 50. That was me a long time ago. <laughs> so it's still true of you. It's still true, I'm still there. <laughs> Those are lifestyle related. 50% of the illnesses? 70. 70%. 70 of health issues over the age of 50 are lifestyle and reversible. Four basics, not smoking, drinking water, fruits and vegetables, and exercise in a community. We're talking reversing health issues. We're talking about adding 14 years and making a bigger impact on our body than our genetics. We're not talking rocket science. We're talking wow. basics, so, 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 basics. Wow. So, 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 but the people that are complaining about the genetics, cause I, because this is my size, this is my, I am a sedentary person. We don't walk in our family. My, my daddy didn't walk, my grandpa didn't walk. <laughs> <laughs> so is that genes or is it, or is it community? community? I'd write, am I right. in a community that doesn't walk? Right. Am, or is it really, maybe our, my community is sedentary. Maybe we're TV watchers, we're not walkers. Well, for example, in our family, because Forrest and I exercise every day, about well, five to six days a week. When did you start? Okay. Okay. At age 50, when I went on sabbatical from the clinic, one of my desires was to figure out how to get exercise into my life. Because I was seeing women in their 50s and 60s in the clinic who didn't have balance. They were falling, getting joint replacements, and on walkers. I saw the trend. And I had balance issues at 50. So, so you I already knew were struggling with balance a little bit. I had terrible balance issues. So I knew the path that was ahead of me. I could see it. I could see where I was headed. Yeah. And I didn't want to go that direction. Okay. So. The thought of exercising for me was like slaying Goliath. It was like, that looks hard. I don't do that. I don't know how to do that. But I started with basics. I started with baby steps. I started with 15 or 20 minutes. I did simple things. And at that point in time, we didn't know what we know now. And so Forrest would kind of right. look at my workouts, <laughs> as I called them. And he said, that's like pathetic. But I kept Thank at you, it. Thank you, Forrest. <laughs> Thank you. But you did it. But you know what? All of us, when we face change, other people might say, well, that's not very much. I could do that in my sleep. We don't always get encouragement when we change. I know. And so if it's not in us to and, change. And if we weren't part of a community that was that way, we are going to get uh, condescending comments. Until we create a new community or right. a new attitude within the community that we have. And so I kept making progress. Different resources would come along and I would learn more and more. And now, Forrest and I, for our anniversary this last year, we put a gym in our house. We have, and it was my idea. Oh, Cheryl, who never who ne wanted to yeah. exercise, wanted cool. a gym. Okay. We have an incredible treadmill with the mat that bounces. We have a weight machine. We have Bowflex. We have a, a bike. We have a stair stepper. We have bands. We have weights. And it is so pretty down there because I made it look nice. So I'd want to spend time and I make sure I've recorded some dance shows or some home decorating shows. And so I go down there and do my hour of cardio and I get to be entertained. And now it's just part of our lifestyle. So, so you can actually watch some of your home shows oh, sure. while you're doing your cardio It's a new stuff. day. You can watch you, Willard, and be down there just <laughs> walking away. Hey, let's fat. walk together. No, that's right. Walk you know, and so that's it. now part of our lifestyle. So when Anna's upstairs trying to sleep in, Hump, hump, hump. You can hear the rebounder, you can hear the treadmill. And you know what? All of a sudden, it's not easy for her to not participate because this has become what our family does. You know, we're, wow. we're moving, wow. we're taking the dog for walks every day, we're going out dancing, we're doing things that are fun, 
we're making sure we're getting rest in our life, spending time with our friends. We initiate. We don't wait for somebody else to do all the initiating. So community and, and what's important to us, what we want to create, is where we're spending our time. And now people are plugging in who like that. You know, one of my coaches said, Cheryl, I think you're ready to go rock climbing. So in a week and a half, are you I'm going to go rock climbing. And this I'm excited cool. and nervous. But she said, Cheryl, you're ready. And I said, well, will you help me? She said, sure. She's an elite rock climber. She's climbed things where when she comes out, she's up here and the rock was still back here. So, I mean, she's <laughs> hanging. I mean, we've got pictures of it. And it she said, you can do this. Now, I can't see it in me, but she, she can, can see it in me because she's seen how far I've come. Well, from a girl, pardon me, a girl who was saying, I've got balance issues, in five years, you've come that far. I have. And it was one step at a time. In fact, when I started, I no longer could ride a bicycle because my balance was so off. So two years ago, when we went to Lake Tahoe, I was so excited because we rented a tandem bike and mm -hmm. I could ride it. I could ride it. I, I did, it wasn't rock climbing, but we did hiking where I was rock, walking on uneven surfaces. I couldn't do that. I so, couldn't so, do so that before. Did, does, it, does it strengthen your ankles and your legs and so on? I mean, does, it does do that? It does because, see, your whole sense of balance is not only what happens in your feet, it's what happens with your eyes. And so part of it's getting eye, hand, eye, feet coordination. And as people age, they start looking down because they're afraid of falling. Right. And when you look down, the information coming to you doesn't allow you to right yourself. One of the worst things you can do is look down while you're walking. The key, even if you have to hold on to something, you're far better off looking straight ahead. At the horizon. Keep, keep your eyes going oh, forward wow. because we all know this. Where you put your eyes is where you go. If you're driving and you look to the side. Yeah, people steer that way. No, it's, tr it's true. So if you're looking down, you will fall. So learning how to look straight ahead can help begin oh. to recreate balance. I didn't know that. I thought since I didn't feel secure on my feet, I should watch where my feet are going. It's the exact opposite. So much of what God does is the opposite of what we think. And so learning to walk with balance is not looking at your feet. It's looking straight ahead and learning how to respond to what's going on around you. And, and I'm getting better and better at going up and down stairs without holding on, without fear of falling. My dancing has changed. My ability to exercise has changed. My ability to ride a bike well, the fact is that changing. You, the fact that you can do a stair climber, that you can do a treadmill... Okay, I mean, no, seriously, I'm serious. those it's are exciting. Pretty, when you talk to me about that, because uh, you know, I'm aware what people as they're getting older, what they struggle with is because this balance issue at, at 40, I would never believe that this could be a possibility. But I, I didn't start till in my 50s, and I now do an hour a day, either on the rebounder, those little miniature yep. trampolines. That's one of the best forms of exercise that someone can possibly do because it's balance, it builds. Um, muscle because it's resistance and it's cardio. NASA considers it the best overall exercise that you can do. Now do you jump on you it? Can you can jump, walk? What you do can do? walk, you can jog. I have small weights and you know I do, I just do a, a, a real fast walk or a, a s real slow jog and do that for an hour. You'd be amazed at, at what that'll do for your lungs, for building tone, for building muscle. So I either do an hour on the rebounder, an hour on the bike, or an hour on the treadmill. And then I do resistance. Now I didn't start there. I couldn't. I didn't have the ability to start there. I started with 10 to 15 minutes. I started by asking Forrest to help me and a few other people that I trusted mm -hmm. who wouldn't make fun of me because of what I couldn't do. H how long before you started seeing real difference in your body? I mean, you, because you, you, I know you weren't as light as you are now. Yeah, <laughs> I shouldn't I'm so say. cute now. I'm getting so <laughs> slender. Some days I just look in the mirror and go, oh, this is just so good. However, this is important. That's really a good question. The first two years, I didn't lose a pound, and you couldn't tell a difference. So the, the, the tape measure didn't say a mm -hmm. difference? There was no difference in the tape measure, no difference in the scales. Now, I'm not saying that's going to be true for someone else. No, no, else. but for you, that's how but it here's was. what it did for me. I was doing this because I had a why and I had made a decision. 
Mm -hmm. It didn't matter what the scales did or didn't say, and it didn't matter what the tape measure did or didn't say, and it didn't matter whether anybody else could tell a difference or not. I knew I was doing what eventually would make a difference, because to not do it was going to take me down right, that path right, right, that was no longer right, acceptable. Right, right, right. You knew the vision on, and the picture that was going to come out if you didn't do it. I knew where it was headed. Yeah. I knew where I was going, because I had all the symptoms of that. And I knew that to turn the ship around was going to take time. I had no idea how long, and it didn't matter, because it was a settled issue in me that this was not acceptable. I desired to create something different, and it didn't matter how long it took. And the first two years, it was, there were times it was a challenge, but it didn't matter, I'd made my decision. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that without a community, be, okay, that would have been really hard. You had a husband that supported you. Forrest was supportive, and I had a couple friends. Okay, you had friends behind you. I didn't have a huge group, because some of them were sort of watching me, and it's like, so I thought this was going to make a big difference, Cheryl. There's a little bit of mocking and sort of laughing. <laughs> Not a lot of support. So I had about two or three people, and I just kept at it. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. And in the second year things started to shift. It was a suddenly. You know, when we read in the Word that there's a suddenly, mm -hmm. we think maybe there wasn't all of this ahead of time. But it's like a baby. Nine months, the mom's growing fat, and suddenly there's a baby, and everything changes. And in the last two years, the last year I dropped 40 pounds in a year. Oh my. And then in the last two months, just because of how I started changing my exercise routine, I dropped four inches in my waist. All of a sudden, fat's leaving, which is not what typically happens in your 50s. Muscle is appearing, and I feel really good. So I'm enjoying incredible fruit now. But there was that time, that wow. hidden time, where what was changing was the inside, the inside, the inside. And now it's showing on the outside. That's the value of community. That's the value of a decision that's based mm -hmm. on what you would like to create, not how you feel. It's really right. a different right. process. But Willard, I can't even describe to you the difference. You know, the basics work, but when you do this with a community and you have a clear why, mm -hmm. that's what sustains you while you're in that transition process. So you can get over the bridge to get mm -hmm. to the point where some of this is manifesting. Yeah, as we're talking about this today, there's some viewers, you haven't, you weren't with us on the first day because that's where we talked about what had to change. I mean, these were the things that were the process, but, but the idea of what do you want to create is such a big part of this and, whole issue. And, and the research, the four basics, your community and your lifestyle, the, you can, you so, can change so, that, without that's cha within your control. Yeah, you know, I was going to say, all of that is not impossible. No. No, that's possible. Because we're not talking about finances here. No. We're not talking about being in the rich community, the no. small, the poor community, or anything no. else. A whole group can come together to get the DVD series. Well, a small that, group that, can do right. this together. So, so if you can't, can't afford a series yourself, hey, b together. Lump get it five get people together. and split the cost because the community will <laughs> have more benefit. effect. And, and right. that may be the actual, it'll be the glue that holds you together. That's right. After I put my 15 bucks into this or whatever it is, I'm getting my share out of it. That's right. Cheryl, we'll take a break. We're talking about the power of being healthy, the DVD series, as well as the book Discovering Wholeness. We'll be right back with Dr. Cheryl Townsley right after this. Speaking from personal experience, Dr. Cheryl Townsley is passionate about teaching people that a balanced, healthy lifestyle can be easy. The book Discovering Wholeness will help you create an environment all your own of balance and health. Also available, the Power in Being Healthy DVD set featuring four DVDs, Cheryl lays out the basics required for living a life of health. Great for small groups or personal viewing, purchase this educational series for $49.95. We love you so much, and we love our family, our It's New Day family. Mom, speaking of It's New Day family, this one says, I have been listening to you since the first day you were on TV. Wow. I enjoy the guests and what they have to tell us. I'm a senior citizen. Well, I'm not surprised since we've been on air since 30, for 32 years. And um, she is from Morden, Manitoba. What a precious She's praying love. for healing for her arthritis and her joints. Can we pray together yes. for her? 
And then I've got uh, someone asking for prayer for a son to come back to the Lord and uh, her daughter's marriage, their daughter's marriage as well. Mm, and this one says, please pray for, pray for my parents. They're, um, they're older, but they've just separated. My dad hasn't oh. treated my mom well for many, many years, and my mom feels so bad for leaving and wants to know God's will for her. My dad needs prayer. Also, his behavior is so hard on our whole family. Well, That's very heavy. Difficult. It's yes. a very heavy thing, those things. But I know that the Lord will bring that wisdom. Yes. He provides wisdom and He provides grace. Mm -hmm. Thank you for praying for restoration for families. Keep on believing for us um, to restore marriages for our children. Okay, well, let's pray then. You want to start? Yes, Lord Jesus, there are some marriage situations here where there are no easy answers and it feels like it's complicated, but I know that there's no confusion with you. And I pray today that you will bring a clarity to wives and husbands and to situa relationships where there's separation involved. And I pray that you'll bring healing and that you will bring your truth that we need to um, so repent for our responsibility in the marriage. And I pray that you will bring light where there's darkness and um, just heal marriages, I pray. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, and Father, I pray for those who have physical ailments today who are just going through a lot of pain and that lady who's wanting to have prayer for her arthritis. arthritis. Yes. Lord, I thank you that you are our healer and I pray also that you would just give us a greater understanding of who you are. Mm -hmm. Open up our eyes, our spiritual eyes, Lord, so we can see you and see how mighty and great and loving you are and how close you are, that you are right here with us and you've said you will never leave us or forsake us and that you hold us in the palm of our, your hand. So we thank you, Father, that you are such a wonderful thank daddy. Thank you, Lord. You're so faithful. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're back with Dr. Cheryl Townsley, and we're talking about making a change in your life. That's what we're talking about, making a big change by doing little steps and, and, and getting a different vision. And also identifying that community that can support what's important to you. It's bringing like-minded people together. together so that you can create something that will bless all of you. You know, and, and one of the things people many times ask Willard is, well, so what do I do with my current friends? Do I just like dump, dump them? <laughs> well, <laughs> It's not so much that you dump your current friends, but you can choose where you initiate spending time. And you can determine where you spend quality time. And you might be the person that God's calling to be the catalyst I was going to, say, to help you with your friends. Maybe this is the group God wants to change. That's maybe this is the group God wants to breathe life into. Maybe this is the group God wants to uh, reduce in size. <laughs> Well, you know, I remember when we first started to yeah, right. work on our health years and years ago, in our church, everybody ate junk food. And so I would always take more than enough food for our family. And Forrest would always make sure we were at the front of the line <laughs> because my food went the fastest because it looked the, the nicest. It tasted really good. And it was interesting over the course of about a year, the food changed at our potlucks. It changed. There were more salads. There was more real food. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, it had been fast food left in the containers. It changed. We were a catalyst to change mm -hmm. the eating of our church. You know, wherever we go, we've determined to be a catalyst to bring about God's way, the easy way, the creating, to look at what's possible. We've decided yeah. that's in yeah. us so we yeah. can be a catalyst for that sure. change. Sure. You know, we don't have to murmur and complain. You know, I think that so often what we do in our community is we murmur and complain about what doesn't work instead of being open to God helping us be catalysts to create. You, you know what I love about what you talk about, Cheryl, is that because if I'm going to be a catalyst to change, it doesn't mean I have to be introducing something really radical. It's, it's making the little decisions, the little steps, the, 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 little, the difference in a little way that people can handle. Be it's simple things. It would be as simple as having people over, f say, for tea and cookies, coffee and cookies, and in addition to coffee, have some water, and in addition to cookies, have some grapes. 
we're not talking radical, we're talking simple little differences. Something that would work for you and something that would work for the person who's not yet yeah, where yeah, you are. Right. Yeah. And not putting them down, not making fun of them, but allowing it to be a process so that if they choose to participate, they can. Yeah, but you yeah, don't have to give up what's important do you know to you. That years and years ago, I worked in a firm and I was in marketing. And I had to host, I, my job was to, at major conferences, was to have a hospitality room. And the industry I was in was a pretty hard living community on, on the part of some. And this was their opportunity to, they were away from home, and this is when they would do some partying and so on. And my boss he had taught me, you know, he says, well, will you do this and this as far as the drinks go? And you make sure you've got a mix as well as the, all the other bottles of things. And, and, he, and I said, well, you, you, don't, you don't mind if I supplement. <laughs> Interesting word, isn't okay. it? <laughs> uh, okay. Do you mind if I supplement your uh, variety of things with some other things? He says, no problem. I, so I did the other stuff. And the most amazing thing I found that over the years, there was a whole table that people virtually never went to, and they went and they had the, the non-alcoholic. They, they had the kind of traits that were good traits. And, and, uh, and, and you know, they said, thanks. You know, they said, we can't find these kinds of things in the other hospitality suites that we go to. And I thought, so we got to be known as a place where you could go, and it was kind of neat. But, I'm, yeah, but, but I was just saying, just by providing something alternative is sometimes a great way to start. Well, you know, what you just described, Willard, is not fixing the problem of what you didn't like. It was creating an option so people could choose. When you give people a choice and you don't put them down for what they do and, choose. And you don't judge them. And you don't judge and you don't get offended by what they do. You give an option. Yeah. Sometimes that's just what people needed to, to be willing to try something. And, and again, what I see is that the environment that we create will attract the people that can build community. Uh, as I was talking to you before the show, yeah. we, we recently went to a birthday party that for me was such an eye-opener to this whole process. It was a friend of ours that we had known for probably 15, 16 years. And about 14 years ago, she went through a very difficult divorce. She had been a very high-paid executive. She wasn't an executive. She was in the counseling field, but very, very, very well-paid, very successful. Mm -hmm. And the divorce was somewhat challenging and a little bit of unforgiveness, and it was just difficult. And, and like so many people, when we go through challenges, she isolated. And so we stayed in touch with Christmas cards, but there was no invitation to really participate. And we would have done that the best we knew how. It's just not where she was at. Well, a few months ago, we got an invitation to her 50th birthday party. So she's younger than we are. We went to the party. And had she not been the person unwrapping the gifts, I would never have recognized her. Never. And I was looking around her, and mm -hmm. everybody was in their 60s, 80s, and 90s. She was in government housing. You have to be 62 and older or disabled. So at 50, she's one of the three disabled. In that community. In that community. She spends $170 a month for her rent, and it's, it's all she can do to put that together every month. And I looked at that, and as we talked at the end of the party, she said, I never planned to be here. I never thought this would happen to me. And I was listening to her, and, and, and in my heart I thought, how many of us never plan where we're going. We end there by default. Most of us don't plan to build, we don't intentionally build a community. We don't look at okay. what to do to create our health. We just survive and then if a trauma hits, that's not the time to build a support community. The time to build a support community is when you're healthier because now she leads a prayer group and a worship group, but she's in a very difficult position because if she gets, you know, starts to move out of it, she, she loses the systems that we have within the U.S. She's in a difficult position. Now, she's making a difference where she's at, but I looked at that, someone younger than I am in that situation, and her community will not elevate her. It will not help her with health because she's the healthiest one in her group. 
She, she's got a, a disease that impacts the nervous system. doesn't impact her brain. She's working on her PhD. She said, maybe I can mentor via the computer because she desperately still wants to make a difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she still cares. And sure. I, I looked at that, and Forrest and I talked, and it's like, if we chose the path of default, of no planning, no intentionality, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we could go there. Mm -hmm. There's probably not one person in that room that planned to be in that setting. So wow. creating our community, being intentional about who we spend time with, you know, looking for people that would join us to do the basics, the water, the fruits and vegetables, 15 minutes of exercise, you know, don't smoke. We're talking the basics. That can begin to change the lifestyle after 50. It changes our community. It's intentional. You know, Willard, what if your viewers mm -hmm. form communities? They learned how to do the basics, how to encourage each other. That could shift their health for the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Well, the better they do it, the longer they'll live. <laughs> and it can happen with families and be a legacy. It, it could even be in families, exactly. And then you can enjoy great-grandchildren. You can enjoy, uh, it, it can make such a difference. We're not talking the hard stuff. We're really yeah. talking baby steps. Ba baby steps here. Baby yeah. steps. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's amazing. Some, some of the statistics in our, in our country, talking about so, some illness areas, um, and talk about how they're just saying in certain parts of the, certain regions in Canada, and it, and it's usually you know they're they're talking about regional illnesses or 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 group area places where certain kinds of illnesses are prevalent in a strong way, and and I've I always I always wondered you know is it the water they're drinking. <laughs> You, you know, but you start asking some of these questions, and then you, you start realizing, you know what, um, it may be the community itself. They, they don't have, there's not an intentional, they're not an easy, or they're not aware of the fact that they could make some very intentional steps. You know, and there's, a, there's a time to be a catalyst to make a difference in a community, and there's times, Is there times to get out to look for... An input into your community. You know, when I started working on this area of balance and physical exercise, I started looking for people who had fruit that I would like more of in my life. And I didn't okay. go check out okay. the people who had fruit worse than mine so I could be better. I wanted to be teachable. So you wanted to be challenged no. in the right way. Teachable. Te oh, oh. teachable. Teachable. See, challenge means I'm not good enough. See, I'm no, really on this, no, this easy is and creative. No, this is important. Yeah, right. I wanted to be teachable, which meant I didn't know what they knew. So when I know I don't know, I don't have to defend, justify, be Ooh, better than. I could right. just show up in my weakness and say, you have fruit that I would like more of. Would you teach me? And you Thank know what? You. People Thank like you. that. Whenever you're really good at something, you're looking for people to pour into. You, you want to mentor them. You, there is something in you that wants to share what's going good in your life. And so when someone comes to you and says, I see the fruit in your life, would you teach me? I mean, it just lights up that person. It's like, I've been looking for someone like you because you know you have a student. And when a student is ready to learn, the teacher appears. And then it's like multiplication occurs. And both people will learn because that's such an exciting environment. This is so, this is very important. Mm -hmm. I would say that, that, that's, that this perspective, because too many of us, I think the challenging thing is it's, it's me and them. It's, it's, it's a, conf it, it almost is. Adversarial. It, it's an adversarial right. understanding of something. And see, when you use the word, you were looking for a challenge, I wasn't. And I wasn't trying to just be picky no, no, on no, words. No, you're, no, no, you're right. I, I'm what I, you. Because challenge means I have to go perform to get better. I know. And I'm not looking for and that. You, th I just want to learn. You don't have to be better than somebody else. You're, there's no intention. You want, to, no. You, want, you want your body to learn. You want your right. mind, your heart, your spirit. I want to grow in spirit. I want to grow in my soul, in my emotions. And I'd like to see my body grow. And it's learning... I don't have to perform and get a grade. I can just enjoy learning because there's joy in the process of learning. I can try this. Well, this was easy. Oh, this wasn't so hard. I remember with this one teacher that was helping me, she had me cross my hands and find this little place and said, now, could you get your head through there? And I looked at her like, 
You've Are you to kidding? Be next. <laughs> but here's what I've learned. Okay, okay. Here's what I've learned about my teacher. That whenever she says, could you, I know there's a way. Okay, so okay. I played with that and I did it. Now, I'm not going to do it here. No, but you, you <laughs> cause some of you can't even probably get an opening. Well, that's, uh, look at how small mine is. I mean, I mean this is. And see, this is flexibility. It's all, it, it, right. It's this is flexibility and knowing how to let your body move. And I played with it and I did it. And you know what? I was as excited as a little kid who's learned how to ride a bike. Because what I realized is my body can do so much that I've never given it permission to because I thought I couldn't or I was always trying to scale the next challenge. Now it's about discovering and learning and creating and it's like, oh, did you see somebody do that? I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I could do this. I'll watch somebody dance and they're just so graceful and I think, yeah. I wonder if I could, could do I that. Could I dance? Wow. And see, I'm not being, I'm not challenging to be better than. No. It's, it's become this, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder what it would be like if I tried this or if I tried that. See, that's a whole different mindset than what I used to do. It used to be a challenge so that I could perform and check it off the list. Because I did. It's not what I'm talking about. This is about creating and discovering. And what if? And what about? And a community that supports that. that, that an environment that, that encourages exactly that. that and you know what? The next time I come back, who knows what I might be doing? I uh, mean, this year is we did a zip line in Hawaii. I did that. <laughs> I did this. I went over this canyon eight times. And, and when we go to Whistler, we're going to do river rafting. And I'm doing uh, rock climbing this month. And... And if they join us tomorrow, I've got pictures of me skydiving. Who would have ever thought that this little farm girl, who was only a brain, or so she thought, yeah. could it do this? Actually has a body this. that does things. And, and enjoy it. I mean, I just, it's like, what could happen next year? Because we're either getting older each year or we're getting younger. And that's really a choice because our body can respond in amazing ways, depending on our emotions, our beliefs, our community. And Willard, when, when you start experiencing that getting younger and more childlike, not childish, it's just exciting because you just, it's like, I wonder what's going to show up next month. This is just an amazing, amazing journey. Fantastic. Isn't that fun? It, it is. It, actually, it is fun. It's fun to hear this. Now, now I'm going to say, I wonder what I could do. Isn't yeah, that, it? That's, you're, you're stimulating something in me to say, what? Now, are you seeing that it's freeing you to go yeah. discover what you can do? It's not about me being better. I, I, I'm not, I, don't need, I don't need to do what you're doing. No. But what could I do? That's right. the whole issue. And that's what being creative is all about. God didn't perform. No, he created. He just, it's like, well, what if we have a sunset like this? And what if the sunrise is like this? That's and right. What about a rainbow with just all the colors? And, and what if we have butterflies? And what if we have birds? That's God. He didn't sit there and do a build the world project. It wasn't Sim City, was it? No. no. I mean <laughs> he just created. And, and what would our life be like if we created each day? If we looked at what we could do that we would like to create, what's possible? Mm -hmm. What if we just did one of those four things that could add 14 years to our life? Right. What if we initiated something, some activity with one of our friends? How would our life be different? How could it be different over the next year instead of doing nothing but surviving and by default yeah, yeah, ending yeah. up in a community that we don't want to spend time with? It's pretty and amazing, we find we're a big it? part of that community. I mean, that, yeah, that would be... And see, we all have a community. We all have a community. It's either isolating, which is what happens to so many people as they do, do, age. Do you say when you get older, you, you were saying... It... Older, disease, and depression... Isolate. ...tend to cause people to isolate because we feel unworthy, like we have nothing to offer, and so we tend to isolate. 
And isolating is one of the first signs of accelerated aging and disease. So when we feel the inclination to isolate, which is different than alone time, Jesus pulled away for alone time. That's different than, than isolating. Isolating is when we put the walls up and, and we don't want to spend time with people. That's an aging process. And that's one when it starts to happen to realize that what we most would benefit from is to be in a community of safe people. Now, for people watching, they may go, well, I don't know who I've even got that would be safe. My family's not safe. I don't know anybody at work. But the one person you always have is the Lord. And, and there were times when we went through those difficult years. Because you had some really tough difficult years. Difficult yeah. years where we lost our home, where we lost um, our business, our car was repossessed. I remember one point in time where we didn't know where we were going to be. It looked like we could be out on the street. I mean, it was not a good place. And I remember being at my brother-in-law's. I was doing ironing for him to make some extra money in his basement. And he had said we could live there if we wanted. He didn't like kids, and we had a daughter. I hated his dog. And his house was brown and tiny. I hate brown. Everything about it didn't work for either one of us. And he said, if you have to. And I was sitting there ironing, and I remember God saying, your attitude right now determines where your family goes financially. You can trust me, or you can look at the circumstances. It really is your choice. And I remember at that point, there was a scripture that, that the Lord reminded me of. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Mm -hmm. And so when, when those feelings of, of, of desperation, mm -hmm. desperation, because I didn't know where we were going to live, what would come out of me, I choose to trust. Not the whole scripture because I didn't have that much energy. I choose to trust. I choose to trust. I choose to trust. And there were days I said it a thousand times. Father, you said that you're, you're not a man that you would lie. You've promised that you'll direct our steps. I have no clue how you're going to get us out of this, but I choose to trust. I choose to trust. And you know what? He did. You know, when I look back on it, I can't pinpoint any one thing that mm -hmm. turned it around. Right, right. But there were baby steps of choosing to trust. Cho okay, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? So when I didn't have the community to support me, because we were a mess and people were kind of avoiding us. But God never God avoided you. Never he, he, left me. Yeah, he never left me. He never left me. Yeah. And he didn't give me lots to do. He gave me one thing to do, to trust, to trust, right. right, to trust. And sometimes we think we want the whole dissertation. We don't need a dissertation because if we can't do one thing, we'll never do the rest. <laughs> we don't need lots. So start with the basics. Trust so, that he has a way when there seems to be no, no way. way. Yeah. Do the basics. Yeah. Begin to develop your community because your lifestyle will either take you towards a sickness and health issues or it will build health. I mean, it's really pretty simple. Yep. It's really simple. It's really the baby steps. Well, you know what, that's, you're encouraging. You're very encouraging, thank you. You're stimulating, you're helping us pull out a, an easel. We're putting you know, our life on the easel, we're gonna say, I wonder what God's do. You know, God's the encouragement is connecting people to courage, and courage is what's needed when you're gonna do something different than you've ever done before. And it's okay to be a little bit shaky, and a little bit nervous, what if? What if? What if? <laughs> what now, if? what if? What if you got a group of people together? What if you just said, you know what? Let's order that series. Let's get that DVD series, The Power of Being in, in, or in Being Healthy. The Power in Being Healthy. I mean, I want to be healthy. Oh, there's a power in it. And, and maybe we even pick up the Discovering Homeless book. I mean, maybe we do that. What if we did? Might be great. Cheryl, thank you. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Looking forward to it. And right now, here's more of it. See you today. Your copy of today's program can be purchased by requesting the program number on the screen. Write, call toll-free, or visit online at www.newday.org. Our, our prayer for you really is that during this programming with Cheryl, that you will not feel 
any way condemned or think, no. oh great, I'm messing up again, I'm eating <laughs> the wrong things, I'm not exercising enough, I'm not moving enough, whatever it is. Yeah, but we want to bring some conviction. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> we want to bring some because conviction the without the condemnation. But the thing is, is that you can begin to do something about it. I know. Please begin to do something. Please. Please do something. Yeah, Move. I need to. You got to. Move your toes. If that's... Do it now while you can. <laughs> right. <laughs> and um, I was thinking about that, that we just want so much hope because a lot of change in your lifestyle in order to change your um, habits. Thank you. <laughs> it's going to take, <laughs> it, it does, it isn't always fun. No. no. And I, and a lot, like for me, I've said, well, I've tried this before and I get myself all worked up and ready and psyched up and then I fall short again. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's so difficult to be consistent in, in changing, and, mm -hmm. it, and you have to continually do that through, I guess, for the power of the Lord Jesus when he says exercising self-control, Yeah, that uh, he can help us. And just this morning, Dad, you were saying it's not that hard for you anymore. Well, you, you and I were some, chatting earlier yeah, today. Yeah, you made and, some changes. We were grabbing breakfast together, and you said, you know, Audrey, it's not that hard. Well, I, I said, you know, I can't take a lot of, uh, you know, I don't want to, I'm, I'm not proud about the fact that, that for me, uh, Staying the weight I need to be is not a difficult thing. I said so. I, I can't be proud of that because it's not a, a challenge for me. It's not a huge challenge the way it is for most people. And I've been thinking about that during the day today. Yeah. As the, because we, we had started that off our conversation like that. And, and uh, the, uh, the verse that that Paul brings out in in where he's in Second Corinthians where he says, uh, you know, in my weakness, his strength is made perfect. Hmm. You, you see, in areas where, where we've got things working out, and in our lives there's so many places that, that, you know, like in a sense that you, you know what's right and you're able to do it, and, and it's working out. But it's where I'm weak. His strength gets revealed exactly in that place. That's where his strength come out, comes out strong. And I thought, well, you know, I, I need grace in my weaknesses. I need grace where things don't work easy for that's I need to go to you for that and so so some people have struggled in one area some have another so if this isn't my area of struggle that doesn't mean I don't have areas of need but you did have struggle in that area I dad did. we all know mm. you used to use this much butter yes. and this much honey like we've seen your lifestyle <laughs> <And> change <laughs> pouring the sugar on we have seen things that are different now than it used to be well, it's not hard for me now to... I didn't know anyone to... could put that much jam on a bun. I didn't know it was physically possible when you used to put jam on a bun. I was like, how does you, he... You used to have a little bit of bun with your jam. Yeah. yeah. You like, know, how do you fit butter. that much jam? And, and syrup. Thick butter. Syrup on <laughs> pancakes. <laughs> See, we're pulling out your old skeletons. Yeah. You had them. It used to be that My way. closet's being emptied out yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Dad, you have... And right salt. Here. You, know, you have these, changed you a have lot, so changed. Yeah. but wow. I love what you brought out because I was getting kind of discouraged, like, okay, I've tried this before, but you know what? It's not about me. No, no, it's, a, it, it's about glorifying the Lord and yeah. His grace that is more than enough yeah. for every moment where I'm needing comfort from food, or I think I can get comfort That's from it. food, or where I can be lazy instead of being motivated to persevere in my moving around and exercising. God is more than enough. Yes. He's always more he than is. enough. Um, there is, we have a DVD series. Wow. And it's called The Power of Being Healthy. And this is the Cheryl Townsley uh, seminar. And this is a wonderful, wonderful tool. If you're going to buy something, get a hold of this because it, it will help you because it will help coach you through. You're right. Great. You see, it's going to help you, you know, the next day, the next month, throughout the year. Mm. This is a wonderful coaching tool that you need to get. And so this is available from us here at New Day Ministries. And I encourage you, don't give up. Don't give up. Start. Keep going. If you <laughs> fail, that's all right. Get up again. We can do it again. We can start <laughs> again. Because, Audrey? Yeah. It's a new day. <laughs> Today is a new day. Thanks for being with us. Speaking from personal experience, Dr. Cheryl Townsley is passionate about teaching people that a balanced, healthy lifestyle can be easy. The book Discovering Wholeness will help you create an environment all your own of balance and health. Also available, the Power in Being Healthy DVD set featuring four DVDs, Cheryl lays out the basics required for living a life of health. Great for small groups or personal viewing, purchase this educational series for $49.95. Addiction is a rapidly growing problem. Even socially acceptable behaviors such as shopping, eating, and working can quietly take over a person's life. Breaking Everyday Addictions. Call or visit us online to get your copy today. 
We're passionate about connecting people to the love of Jesus Christ. New Day Partners, our friends, our family. Call with your donation, 1-800-556-3533. Coming up next time on It's a New Day. The bigger things got, the more life it took out of me. Because my job is only to be a branch. And it's God's life flowing through me that does the multiplication, that brings life to people. And it's Him being in their lives. Turn up the truth in your life. Tune in to It's a New Day. Want to get connected with It's a New Day? Get in touch using the contact info on your screen. We're very intentional this week about talking about health and about your body. We want you to be whole. We don't want you to live with pain. And if there's anything that we can do in agreement with what God is doing, we're going to do our part. And um, it's it's going to change our lives, even personally. I hope so. There's <laughs> I, No, I, I do. I really yes. do hope so. And I know that there's been changes that have gone on in mm -hmm. our home as mm -hmm. well. That's right. Uh, with my eldest son, he's, you know, 22. Mm -hmm. um, he's just has chosen to become more physically active. A very, he's chosen and, to be very healthy. Uh, and he's watching his food, he's watching his diet, he's exercising, those kinds of things. And those kinds of things become contagious. You mm -hmm. know, it, it begins to change. The community, the, the, the well, family community. <laughs> yeah, the family community. And so it's affecting us and our, our daughter and those kinds of things. So I'm hoping today, as we've been able to come into your home, that the things that are being shared this week will affect you, mm -hmm. will affect your family and your community that you're around, that you would begin to make changes for the better, that you'd become healthier and stronger. That's my prayer because here we are, we're, we're gonna continue to fight for family. Mm -hmm. We're gonna continue to see wholeness and body, Thank soul, and God. spirit restored yes. to you. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time on It's New Day. Bye-bye. Addiction is a rapidly growing problem. Even socially acceptable behaviors such as shopping, eating, and working can quietly take over a person's life. Breaking Everyday Addictions. Call or visit us online to get your copy today. Speaking from personal experience, Dr. Cheryl Townsley is passionate about teaching people that a balanced, healthy lifestyle can be easy. The book, Discovering Wholeness, will help you create an environment all your own of balance and health. Also available, the Power in Being Healthy DVD set featuring four DVDs, Cheryl lays out the basics required for living a life of health. Great for small groups or personal viewing, purchase this educational series for $49.95.